All right, thank you. Uh, we just wanna thank you for having us. Uh, we enjoyed working on this project. Uh, we are State University of New York, uh, SUNY Morrisville. Um, next slide, please. Uh, just to introduce our team, uh, my name is Wayne Ferner. Um, with us, we had Jake Hartnett, Anastasia Edwards, and Evan Salvaggio. We're all uh, bachelor degree program at uh, SUNY Morrisville for renewable energy. Um, we've known each other for about four years now, so we we have a pretty close relationship with each other. Um, we worked on this pretty much every day. Uh, our advisors were Dr. Shamsul Arafin and Dr. Jenny Frank. Next slide. Uh, just a little bit of the district overview. Um, the Lummi Nation has a population of about 5,500 people, about 20,000 acres. Um, they have energy and sustainability independence goals, and they're the third largest tribe in Washington state. <clears throat> so the design goals was uh, mainly to improve economic self-sufficiency and reduce carbon footprint as a whole, uh, provide resilience against power outages and, and things like that. So we had an iterative process for our design. Um, we started right out with initial designs and system losses. And then after we would find the initial designs, we had to go to local and national code and we would just see, make sure we were following code. And if we weren't, we, we went back and uh, altered our designs and that got us to our final site. Um, we considered all of our available area. And uh, so, so we've got a lot of uh, experience with both rooftop and ground mount system uh, installation. So we considered osprey racking and iron ridge racking and uh, whether or not we should do roof penetrations and uh, we considered roof strength as a whole um, to decide whether we want to do rooftop or ground mount installations. Next slide. Uh, some, of the, some of the things we used to help us design was uh, Aurora Solar and Helioscope. Uh, we initially started with Helioscope mainly for our just rough designs right off the bat. Um, we used system advisor model for battery sizing and system sizing as a whole, and also for some of the financial analysis and uh, uh, as well as REOP for battery sizing. And we used CAD for our one line and three line diagrams. How's it going? Um, I'm in Salvaggio, and let's talk about demand analysis. Um, so this graph shows the average 15 minute uh, consumption of our facilities here in Alami Nation. And um, so as you can see, casino and the school and the housing authorities uh, have the highest demand. Uh, so, and then the youth academy has the lowest. Um, taking into consideration an increase in demand with new projects, um, including housing and upgrades to uh, sewer treatment. We uh, expect some of those loads to increase. And um, yeah, uh, next slide. Uh, electricity demand. So this graph shows our seasonal uh, daily load pattern uh, for the district. So in the uh, summer with the blue line, you see the uh, highest demand. And uh, as shown in the different colors uh, pretty much gives us a rough estimate of when we're going to get the most demand and mm, the best uh, highest power um, with these graphs we can target optimal peak shaving times um, okay yeah. next slide and then continuing with low demands we broke down from each uh, separate site so we could help our design um, with the patterns that we found like with the ferry and um, yeah, so we pretty much chose each site and broke it down individually and made an uh, accurate assumption on, on our design. Uh, so this is just continued. And um, you can see from the school has a very uh, like constant uh, graph. So you kind of know 
exactly what you're getting. So in the summer, it's obviously not used as much. So the load goes down. And um, and then we said on the opposite side, for um, for places like the Little Bear, you know, it, there's no pattern really. So we took that into consideration, and then we made a decision off of that. Uh, next slide, Jake. Uh, so this is Jake Hartnett, and I'm going to be talking about the conceptual design for our systems. So this is a, kind of a breakdown of our planned systems. Uh, we have uh, solar on nine different sites with the bus garage, Finkbonner Fish, and Slater Annex. Uh, they were outside of our demand facilities that were given to us. Um, as shown in the figure, our large rooftop system is placed on the casino. Um, the site was chosen because of its high electricity demand and its available rooftop space, um, it was just a very good site to uh, offset some demand. Um, our roof and ground mount system at Little Bear Elderly Home is was event, uh, at one point designed to provide backup power through a battery system, um, which is what we sized it for. Uh, it didn't end up working out, but, um, and then, our ground mount single axis tracking system at Slater Annex was, will be utilized to provide local power generation on a community scale. So here are some of our constraints in the design process. Um, we considered storage for some of our systems for either peak shaving or resilience targets. Um, but after we ran the systems through SAM and REAPT, there didn't seem to be a clear financial benefit unless it was only for the benefit of resilience, if it was that important. Um, our systems abide by tribal laws and codes of environmental disturbance and our solar placements on rooftop and ground areas make considerations for existing roof penetrations, view shed, community and landowner activity areas, and our systems do not interfere with any new construction projects. Um, so we chose two different types of panels for our designs, um, the Rec Solar 385 Pure and the SunPower E2435. Um, for all of our systems, except for the Slater Annex, we used the REC solar panels. Um, and we chose these because they were sustainably sourced, highly recyclable, and made with renewable energy, which we thought was important um, just for the environmental goals of the tribe. That it was highly recyclable. Um, the sun panels, there the sun power panels were used because they're compatible with the single axis tracking system that we chose, and there wasn't really any other options, so we had to stick with those. So these are some of our results from our our Aurora solar designs. Um, we broke down both of our rooftop and ground mount systems and separated them out. Um, so we get a 47% energy offset and we use multiple different configurations of inverters and different topologies and just some a diverse portfolio. Um, as for our distribution system impacts, we did analysis on that aspect, but we didn't find any network distribution upgrades that we would need to make. All right, so I'll be uh, talking about battery integration. Um, so we touched on this a little bit before, um, and we'll get we'll get into it. Uh, next slide. Okay, so uh, battery opportunities. So batteries have been a uh, rising technology, um, and you know a lot of a lot of people have been uh, getting more familiar with them, and so we figured we'd give them a try. Um, so we looked into uh, the resi resiliency. Um, so blackouts and um, shortages, you know, get, having that extra power to uh, be able to support um, the facilities. Um, so also it could increase grid independence. Um, so people will be able to, you know, easy, easier, you know, load onto the grid. Um, load shifting, it helps both grid and owner um, optimize price and uh, energy energy usage, um, peak shaving, 
um, discharge at high peak hours and it helps uh, grid stability. Um, closed battery storage. So we looked at two sites, uh, Little Bear Creek Elevated Home and uh, the Silver Reef Casino. Um, we looked at these two because they were both high loads and um, we really thought about the casino um, battery because um, both of its high demands were uh, in the morning and at night. So, uh, which would make it a great uh, candidate for peak shaving. Uh, in addition, they are high loads. So the storage, it would take at a high load. Uh, and so it would take a high load off the grid pretty much. On the next slide. Uh, the next topic we would like to discuss is the financial analysis of our proposed system designs. Uh, on this slide, our approach to the financial analysis is depicted with each site having its own characteristics, limitations, and specifications. We had to look into different styles of racking, including ground mount and roof mount systems. We also had to investigate different types of panels that were better suited for the locations of design. These varied panels, racking, and system setups all created variable costs for the different aspects of the systems. Next to consider for our financial analysis was the variable utility rates at each site and how much electricity currently costs so that we could understand the savings that each system had the potential to create. In addition, we must consider the timeframe in which these will be constructed as to know the approximate completion timeframe of the project and when certain costs are expected, along with potential setbacks that could arise. Lastly, we had to take into consideration the financial viability of solar plus storage and if it would be feasible and beneficial to the tribe considering the added costs it would bring to the system. From this information, we could put together rough estimates of costs for the solar systems proposed and the battery storage for selected sites. Once financial models had been made, a method of payment and our recommend, recommended system was decided. Next slide. Shown on this slide is a table containing interconnection costs, costs per watt, and aggregate costs of systems of the system sites proposed. The most expensive site, as seen on the table, would be the Slater Annex, our large ground mount system containing tracking panels. So expensive, this system would generate a large portion of energy for the Lumi tribe. Our least expensive system found um, would be on Fisherman's Cove. The interconnection costs include the amount each site would cost to connect to the grid and the cost per watt is the approximate cost that each watt of the systems are rated to produce. Overall, the total for all the systems would come in around $44.1 million. Next. Depicted on this slide is a financial breakdown of the solar storage slash battery backup systems at our two proposed locations, Little Bear Creek Elderly Home and the Silver Reef Casino. Little Bear Elderly Home was an ideal choice as it houses residents who require life-saving technology to be on hand and operable at all times. Having a backup power system here would provide the opportunity to meet those needs coming in at, a, at an approximate install cost of $90,000 and a present annual value cost at $546,000. This system would be quite expensive. Similarly, the cost of battery storage at the Silver Reef Casino would be quite expensive as well coming in at an install cost of around $198,000 and a present value of annual cost around $527,000. Though these systems will provide resilience and partial load coverage to these facilities, they are quite expensive and their financial viability would depend on how important the needs they met are to the Lemmy tribe. Next. Um, on this slide, we have the construction schedules for the rooftop PV installs. We have allotted four months for design in which we have taken for the system. Um, we would then go over permitting, which would take six to eight weeks, and construction, inspection, and commission are all given a rough time frame together, as this, um, this chart is given for all the systems together that we would have for rooftop PV. Next slide. This slide, similar to the previous, goes over the construction of the ground mount systems. We have given time for mobilization and transmission line upgrades if need be, um, along with um, more stretched out time frame because they take a longer period of time. Next slide. Continuing from the previous slide, uh, when it comes down to the purchase of the system, we took into consideration two options, a power purchase agreement and a straight cash purchase. 
To weigh out the pros and cons of the system, we laid out some thoughts covered here on this slide. A PPA would cover a significant portion at a uh, lower project cost. Um, yeah, time is up. Thank you.